Hi Plano Kindergarten, I'm excited to start our Kindergarten Pumpkins today. Have you noticed that there's a lot of pumpkins showing up at the grocery store and at the different markets? That's because it's pumpkin time, so they all look very different. Some are bumpy, some are different colors. Just like the fall, so you're going to notice that the leaves are going to fall off the trees and change colors. One thing that reminds me of fall is the warm colors like red, orange, and yellow. These can be called the warm colors. They're called the warm colors. They remind us of things that are warm, like fire or lava. Opposite is the cool colors like green, blue, and purple, reminding us of things that are cool. We're gonna be using watercolor today. However, if you don't have watercolor paints, it is A-OK, -okay. no freaking out. It's all good, use what you have. Hi, kindergarten, it's Mr. Bowfield. So this week, I wanted to show you how I'm going to paint some pumpkins, and we'll talk all about it. But before we begin, I wanna let you know that you may have some of the supplies that I'm using, you may not, and that's okay. I'm gonna show you some different ways that you can achieve some really cool painted pumpkins, and some do not require paint. So don't freak out if you don't have the same supplies as me. You could describe the pumpkins that we're gonna to create today as a still life. If I had to compare a pumpkin to a 3D form, I would probably say they look most like a spear, like a ball that you can hold in your hand, except they have all these little ridges. They also sometimes have a little stem on top. So we wanna include these in our drawing, which I'm gonna paint later on. I'm gonna go ahead and sketch some pumpkins on my paper. You don't have to do it my way. Your teacher might even have their own expectations and instructions for you. So I have my piece of paper. This is a watercolor piece of paper. However, if you have a piece of cardstock or even just copy paper, this will be fine. It depends on how you want to add color today. And we'll go over how you can do that. I'm gonna start by creating pumpkins. You could do one big pumpkin or maybe you have smaller pumpkins all over. I'm gonna start with a long oval. It looks like a potato. Then I'm gonna give it some C's on the side and really echo that shape. So when I say the word echo, what that means is it looks a little bit like the shape I started with, but it's a little bit different too. It echoes out. So I'm gonna do an echo. It looks kind of like a C and comes around and rounds it out. Because remember the pumpkin can be really bumpy as well. I'm going to do another one on this side and out. And then you can keep going and make your pumpkin as big as you want it to be. It can be a wide pumpkin, tall pumpkin, itty bitty little mini pumpkin. It's totally up to you. I'm just kind of echoing the sides. Don't forget, you can also give it a little bit of a stem, however you wanna do it. And then I'm gonna continue adding pumpkins all over until I feel like I have a good composition. A composition means that you filled up the entire piece of paper and you made it interesting. Okay, what do you think, guys? So I decided to do a variety of pumpkin sizes. So when you add variety, you make it more interesting. Okay, so now we can start painting. Like I said, if you don't have these materials, it's okay. Just keep on watching. I'm gonna give you some options for those at home or those in school who don't have the same supplies. I'm gonna be using a paintbrush, a paper towel. Obviously, I have my artwork, a watercolor palette, I like to keep my area safe with a laminated placemat. And then I also have some water because it's watercolor, so we're gonna need some water. Okay, so first things first, I wanna put my placemat on the table because I'm trying to protect the table and have less to clean up at the very end if I make a mistake or make a mess. And then I'm gonna put my artwork on top. I'm gonna keep my paper towel and my water nearby because I'm going to need them. All right, so I need you to meet someone. This is Mr. Paintbrush. Say hi, Mr. Paintbrush. Mr. Paintbrush can be very grumpy sometimes. He does not like it when you push him hard into the paper. You wanna take good care of your paintbrush, otherwise it's gonna turn and look like this, which is crazy hair, and that will not work for you. It gives him a crazy bad hair day. He also doesn't like it when people poke or pull his hair. Would you like it if someone pulled and tugged at your hair? No, I like to call this shiny part his shirt. Let's say it's picture day. Would you want someone tugging and pulling on your shirt? No, very good. So make sure that when you're using him, you are being very kind and gentle so that you don't give him a bad hair day. 
When you're ready to start painting, you can open up your palette and start choosing your colors. I'm gonna probably stick to these red, oranges, and yellows. I see those in my pumpkins. When you're ready to paint, you dip, let it drip, get rid of that extra wetness, and then you paint, you swirl. Always get your paintbrush wet, and then you can start wetting the paint. I'm gonna start with this yellow here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that wet paintbrush, swirl it around, and now I can start painting. I like to go in swirls, slow down, be kind to Mr. Paintbrush. Now notice, I did not paint the whole pumpkin yellow. I'm leaving some areas so that I can start mixing colors. That's gonna be the fun part of this. Maybe I wanna mix in some orange. I'm gonna dip into the water like I'm taking a bath or giving him a shower. Now when you get out of the bathtub or the shower, you have to what? Dry your hair, get rid of that excess gunk, yet yellow paint, you don't wanna get into the other colors. And you're ready for your next color. I'm gonna dip again, dip, let it drip, and then go into the orange. And now I'm gonna add some orange to my painting. What's cool about painting is that I can take the color and it's going to mix. You can watch it even mixing on the paper, which is really cool. It's happening in real time. You can make this interesting, add little dots. Not all pumpkins are perfect. All right, so I have my yellow and orange, but I wanna try a little bit of the red. I just wanna see what it looks like. So of course I have to dip, let it drip, Eh, don't go to the paint just yet. You need to dry off. Yeah, see, look, get rid of that some of that gunk, that paint I don't need. We don't need to be mixing all the colors in here. Dip, let it drip. Now go into the red, ooh la la. All right, I added some red. What do you think? I feel like that was exactly what I needed to make this pumpkin really pop. I'm gonna paint my pumpkins. I'm gonna give them some brown stems and then I'll get right back to you. Take your time, do not rush. That's the fun part about art. Okay, here I have it. I wanna show you this teachable moment. I'm being really careful with mine because it's still wet and a little bit drippy. I had this one part where the red, there was just too much. You can always take your paper towel and give it a little dab and you can pick up some of that paint back. It won't make it perfect, but you can, if you do this just in time, you can go back and fix a spot that got a little bit too wet by just giving it a little bit of a dab. This can also do some really interesting texture effects on your pumpkins if you want. I need something for the background. I also need to complete some of these stems. Red, orange, and yellow are considered warm colors. They remind us of things that are warm, like fire or lava. Green, blue, and purple are the cool colors. They remind us of things that are cool. Think of like a winter purple night sky, some cool water, and some beautiful green trees in the winter time. That's how I imagine it to remind me of my warm and cool colors. So I'm gonna add some cool colors to my background. However, you could do yours differently. Or maybe you could switch it up and add some colored pencil or crayon to your background. In fact, just for fun, I'm gonna layer it up. I'm gonna take a crayon and I'm gonna see what happens if I take this crayon, draw some grass first, and then paint on top of it. All right, I put some crayon grass down. Now it's time for me to add some cool colors. But I want you to know something. If I add more water to my green, so let's say as I'm painting, I'm using more water than paint, my color might end up being light, which is fine. But if you want that color darker, swirl even longer in the paint a few more times and you'll start to get a darker color. Look at the difference, swirling around or light color. It's totally up to you. All right, here's what I have. I did some cool colors, obviously some warm colors for my pumpkin. If you ever make an oops or things start to blend in a way you don't like, use that paper towel and dab. No, not that kind of dab, this kind of dab. Okay, so I showed you how to do some watercolor pumpkins. I'm gonna move this out of the way and show you maybe some techniques that you haven't heard of. So these are for the students that maybe don't have the same materials or you wanna try it a different way, I'm still gonna help. You. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a special little trick. I'm gonna borrow my placemat again because I bet you had no idea that your Crayola marker could, depending on what kind of marker it is, if it's the washable or non-washable, um, that it could actually be your paint today. So let's say I take my marker and I draw 
some pumpkins, or a pumpkin, I should say. You can actually take your marker. I'm gonna use orange, but you can mix it up. You could add red and yellow in here. Just give it a little bit of color. You don't have to color the whole thing. Take your wet paintbrush and barely, barely, barely go over it in some swirls, and ooh la la, you now have orange paint. And you can let it dry just like the watercolor, and it's gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna try out some color mixing on this pumpkin here. So I put it, I put some yellow and I put some orange. Let's see what happens. Swirl, swirl, swirl. Ooh la la, they are blending together. How fun is this? So I bet you had no idea that your markers could do this. Obviously when it's wet, you don't wanna go back over it with the marker, that could ruin your marker. But if you let it dry, it's gonna look exactly like paint. And like always, if you don't have markers or paint, use what you have. I have colored pencils, you can use crayon, you can draw yours with pencil. Take some Play-Doh and you can sculpt it into a pumpkin. I hope you had fun creating pumpkins with me. I hope that yours turns out great and I'm excited to see what you're gonna create. Don't forget, be nice to Mr. Paintbrush. Don't give him a bad hair day. Have a wonderful day, guys.